when A Bug's Life came out on video, I remember my little sister would watch it all the time and she would quote it any chance she got. It was one of the few things we had in common and we both enjoyed. And I think somewhere it's still in this house, we still have that old set. Video set. <laughs> it was a fantastic movie, and it still is to this day. It still holds up pretty well, I'd like to think. It's an unusual story, uh, for Disney standards. <laughs> Yet, it still contains the heart and the comedy and the great storytelling we came to know. It was one of Pixar's earliest features, and it's, it has happily not gotten a sequel, and there are no plans for it in the works. Honestly, it wouldn't work. It could be. And, uh, it has a princess, but she's no Disney princess, apparently, because... Well, it fits, because in the end of the movie, she isn't a princess anymore. She becomes queen, and her little sister becomes a princess. Still a little unfair, I mean, considering that certain princesses in the princess line aren't even princesses. Mulan, for example. But, you know, circumstances what they are, it would probably make, be kind of difficult to have an aunt in a human lineup. Unfortunately, this also makes it really difficult for character meet and greets. They are, to meet any of the characters, extremely rare. Costumes are hardly seen. I've only seen, like, some of the ant costumes once in a Tokyo Disney show. But feel free to prove me wrong if, you, if you've seen them before. But back to the movie. It is loosely based on the uh, Seven Ronin or Seven Ro Warriors, a very old tale, with Pixar's own creative flair. And it's, it's really fantastic for this kind of genre, this kind of film. You have your typical outsider and you have your typical um, misfits. But what wasn't typical was what came of it. Their skills didn't exactly save the day because they kind of messed up in the bird thing. Da -da -da. It was Slick himself who finally helped put an end to it. And the uh, little the circus guys, they don't stay in the village. They leave. And I, I thought that was very unusual but also very cool that they served their purpose and they went on to what they wanted to do. They weren't obliged to stay in the village. They went on to do, an, went on to do their own thing. Their hopes and dreams still stay with the circus, and it came back with them. I thought that was very sweet and very kind. And Hopper is a terrifying villain. I am still upset when people don't include him in their favorite villain list. You still get, like, Malef Maleficent and Ursula and Jafar, and those are good villains, but I think Hopper is amazing on his own. He has no powers, but he's an excellent manipulator. Using violence and emotions and men mental skills and all that, to make his opponents feel absolutely worthless and to scare the living shit out of them. He still creeps me out and it's incredibly effective. Um, the scene where he looks like he's about to kill Flick and is just beating him to a merciless pulp, it always scares me and it, it, it amazes me that they allowed it to go that far with those horrific bruises and the fact that like, he's barely even standing and limping at the end of it. It's a fantastic thing to see, and I think kids should be exposed to some kind of violence that way, as long as it isn't too much, because they can handle it, and they need to see just how much of a threat their villains are. And continuing on, the speech he gives as he stands up is one of my all-time favorites. It really inspired me in my own writing, and I, I kind of look for that kind of thing in other hero-villain dynamics. Where the hero, despite all odds, just stands up and points out the obvious that no one else has been able to see until this point. That's my kind of favorite thing ever. So yeah, I really like Flick. I, he's a sweetheart and he's hilarious. I I love every character in this. Honestly, there's there's no no one to hate, well, except for the villain who you're supposed to hate. But you get the idea. I mean, he's a fantastic villain. These are all fantastic villains. These are fantastic characters. Setting. You didn't need to use modern or pop jokes or toilet humor, you just had a bunch of wacky characters in a terrible situation. It was relatable, it was fun, it was fantastic, still is, makes you want to go watch it now. It's something that really can't be touched upon. Sometimes, maybe, maybe in the future I'll get the DVD. And maybe I'll watch it again with my little sister, because I know she still loves it. I know sometimes on her Facebook she'll still quote it. And I'll have a little laugh. This kind of movie brings people together. 
makes people think. And you know what? I like to think it gives some people hope because at every instance, Flick was against all odds. Every single instance. He had less than zero chance of winning, and yet he kept at it. He didn't give up. He kicked ass. He, he was this close to dying, and he still defied Hopper. He still rose up and spoke his mind. He did what was, he was right. He did what was right for the best reasons, despite all odds. He is a wonderful hero. He has so much potential and respect, and I deeply admire him. Which is a lot to say for a cartoon man. And it's films like this that really make me want to see Pixar do more independent films, because this is this is so independent. This is like not really a story that we've ever seen before in the Western audience, at least. With unique characters and a unique setting, and uh, everything was unique, and that's what I think Pixar has such great abilities with. Taking a totally new concept and owning its ass. <laughs> that's why I hope they do less sequels and prequels and all this crap and focus on their own original ideas, because that's what they do best when they just go at it. I never want to see a sequel or prequel to this, because that would, to me it would just ruin it. I think it's perfect the way it is. There's nothing more we need to see or nothing more we need to know. I'm satisfied with what's given me. And I hope that when the I hope that like the current generation and future generations are showing their kids the classic movies, they don't forget this movie because this is a very important movie for all the reasons I've said and just for everything else because it's a smart movie, it's a fun movie, it's it's an everything movie. I can't imagine why if I can't imagine people not liking this movie. How could you not like this movie? It's so cool. Put it in a weird way. I probably am rambling at this point, so I guess I should wrap it up. Um, I love Bugs Life back then. Love it now. If they re-release it in theaters, I would probably I would see it again in a heartbeat. I would drag my little sister, I would drag my parents. Let's go. Let's all go see Bugs Life. Let's all quote it again. Let's all quote Heimlich because that was her favorite character. <laughs> so to end things up, thank you Pixar for making Bugs Life. Thank you for creating Flick and Hopper and Princess Ada and everyone else. Because this is a movie that can't be beat.